What's up, family? This is your man, not your boy. Go Black to Africa. So I am here in Ghana. Uh, what's the name of the area, brother? This is Pantang, or Yarifa. All right. And so, my brother, I'm going to let you introduce yourself because you all need to know that this place exists. Let's you expats who are coming into Ghana and need direction, need a person who's here on the ground doing the work, point you in places that you need to go, but he's going to explain to you what's all going on. Please introduce yourself. All right, my name is Prince. This is Palace Africa. We host diasporas coming from all over that want to come and connect with people on the ground here. Um, this, is, this is just the place you have to be when you touch down in Ghana because you're going to get connected with all the right people that need to help you get to where you want to go and things that you need to get done. All right, so let's get at it right here and check out your beautiful place. All right, my brother. So please share with us as we walk into your palace, what do we have going on here? All right, so welcome to Palace Africa. So this is the compound area. We have stage here that we put together at different events uh, for people to come and just enjoy themselves here, the diaspora community, come out here, conferences, meetings, events, you name it, every once in a while we put together events here. Um, sitting area. Um, and then on this side we have the guest lodge. So if you want to come down for a couple of days, three days, you want to come down for a tour, we can host you here, stay with here for a couple of days, three days a week. Uh, on this side we have the apartments. This is where we help repatriates that are trying to transition here in Ghana stay. We have two bedroom apartments. So if you want to stay for a month, two months, three months, it's better than doing Airbnb and going all around where you can just stay here and be connected with everybody you need to get connected to. Nice, nice. So you have different events that happen here. You have the um, Guest lodge. Guest lodge, rather, right here. How many, how many rooms are here? So in we have five lodge? rooms here. We can go to the top and check out the top if you want to get. Okay. And then how many apartment uh, rooms? There are three two-bedroom apartments. Three two-bedrooms. Yes. Okay. And now how many people can each accommodate? Because um, so you, you said bedrooms. Yeah, there are two bedrooms. Two so it bedrooms. can be for family. It can be for individuals. Anybody that comes and want to do extended stay, the apartments is where we put you at. Okay. And so now what do we have as we enter here into this area? Oh, this is where we, we just vibe. When we have our events or you just want to come and just relax and just be, be here, this is the place for you. Okay. Now I see beautiful paintings on here. Now these paintings here, do they depict anything? Do they uh, share a story or what have you? Because some awesome artwork here. Definitely. I mean, this... This is obviously telling a thousand and one stories if you look at it. It just depends on your interpretation of what the African dilemma really looks like and feels like. We all have our own stories based on where we, we are with ourselves. So, uh, again, this is the struggle and we're all fighting for our freedom. And the liberation to freedom is gonna, really going to start with us. It begins with each and every individual. Wow, okay. And so this right here is the place really that people can vibe, can unwind, Definitely. can uh, digress Definitely. in a place here like this right here. Definitely. You have a restaurant here or anything? We do special catering to, uh, for events, but if you do come and you want food, we have a special caterer that caters to you. All right, so this is our guest lodge. So there are four rooms down here. Um, again, each room is unique in representing every African country. Like that room represents Senegal. Obviously, this is South Africa. That room there is Kenya. And I think we got Zaire on the other side. So each room is unique where we put different pictures to represent with quotes, represent some of our freedom fighters from all the different country, African countries. All right. All right, this is our executive suite. Um, it's 200 CDs a night. Um, and then the rooms downstairs are 100 CDs and 150 CDs per night.
Okay, so where are we walking into now? This building here is where we got that pockets and then we got the gym. So when you come here, that doesn't mean you're just gonna be laying around. You're gonna work out. <laughs> Please share with the people that you your profession is what? I was I was a personal trainer when I lived in the States. I came back here, did the same thing, and I was actually able to, you know, make my money here in Ghana. Doing boot camps, managing gyms. Um, and also training a lot of young youths coming up who are interested in becoming professional trainers. So this one is on site. So when you come, there's a young man here by the name of Yao, who's the trainer. Her, her job every day. All right, this is just one of the apartments. This is the one that is available at the moment right now. So just wanted to show you guys what the two bedroom apartments look like. It's just a simple two bedroom apartment. Um, again, representing all the different African countries uh, with our freedom fighters quotes on the walls. The apartments are five hundred dollars a month. Okay, five hundred dollars a month. That's it. Is that gym included? Gym included. <laughs> okay. Gym included. Very nice. Very nice. I'm loving the quotes. Alrighty, so two bedroom apartment for five hundred dollars a month. Okay, gym right across the hall from you, or downstairs. When we go upstairs, I guess you have other rooms, right? Yeah. So oh. with the other rooms, um, because we have my mom is actually visiting us from the states. Okay. She's here too. Okay. Um, so we're gonna go all the way to the top and go see our rooftop lounge. Perfect. Okay. Lounge. Again, you can just come up here, get a nice breeze, stay out here, read a book. So chilling out here. Definitely. Unwind and unravel that mind. Come out here looking at beautiful Ghana and all that she has. The possibilities, the opportunities that are out here in Ghana. I mean, when you look out here and you see the roofs, rooftops, and you see all different um, type of homes, and I think it's a beautiful thing that we all can um, live harmony. Whether you're rich or whether you have a little, we can still be neighbors and still be in peace and um, have a community. That's one thing I love. All right. Yes, it is. Okay, so this up here, this is a rooms here. There's a room across the street, but there's a guest in there. Right, so right. We don't have to go in there yet. Yes, yes. So as of right now, the down apartment is the only one that is available, so anybody who's interested, they gotta email me, contact me, and then we're gonna make sure we have reservations before they come down. Okay. All right, Prince. So this beautiful place that you have here, you know, you have guest house, apartments, you have the gym that you have kind of catered to the expats that are coming in. And we kind of talked about the importance of how you have put in place for those who are not familiar with Ghana or the city or the country, how they can land here and really take advantage of your experience, your resources and all. Please share with us your thoughts on that. Definitely. Coming to Ghana, it's, it's so crucial and so important that you are connected with somebody on the ground 
who has the network already already set up. So when you come in, anything and everything that you need, you will be pointed in the right direction. That's so crucial because if you come and you connect, you don't connect with the right people, it could be a different experience. And we don't want anybody leaving Ghana with a bad experience. Yeah, yeah. And so you lived in America from the age of 17 to the age of? 13 to 30. Oh, age of 13 to 30. That's right. You decided to come back to Ghana. Why? Well, everything that everybody sees that is wrong with it is exactly what I saw. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. And if we want to be free, we want to be free. It's our birthright to be free. Nobody can really live under that situation and feel comfortable. We can do it, not say it can't be done, but you know you ultimately are paying a price to, to do that. And ultimately for me, I wanted to be free. I wanted to do what it is that was in my heart that I felt was, was for me. Yeah. And so coming back, mm -hmm. I yeah. know that right now I'm in paradise. Wow. You know, there are those who, of course, stay in America and live there and, you know, people, you know, find their way, they, they situate, they think it's better and all that for them. Nothing to them, but we do know, like you said, there are people who feel as though that they're strapped, they're boxed in, they can't advance, they can't excel. And you felt that way. You lived in DC area, Virginia area, Atlanta, Georgia, and you being in these black Mecca cities, you still didn't feel free. I love, I love being around my people, that's for sure. So, yeah. I mean, it's a system. I mean, it's, it has nothing to do with us. It's a system, the way the system is set up. So, again, to those that can live there and are okay, that's great. But ultimately, some of us, the ancestor callings are way too strong. Yeah. yeah. And so, for a lot of us that have come, it's really not a choice of ours. You know, we are our ancestors and coming back, you know, we have been chosen to be here. Yeah. So when you come, it's important that you connect with people who are who are in the, understand where you're coming from and where you need to go. I like how you said that. You know, you were chosen to come. Not everybody receives that call. And for those I know, because I get a lot of emails from people who say, you know, Africa's been calling me. My soul was, you know, yearning for Africa, whatever. And people got on researching and all this right here. You know, I tell people you should come now because it's calling you and that is really a an answer for you sure. to go ahead and grab that maybe some unanswered questions have been unresolved back in the past. Ghana, we're here in Ghana and um, Ghana's booming. For sure. Please please share with the people, man, what's really going on in Ghana. For sure. Man. I mean, there's a lot happening. I've been here now 15 years and like I shared with you earlier, when I started building this place, there was nothing here. Fast forward, I mean, you can't even buy a land here. Yeah. You know, so much is happening in Ghana. There's so much opportunity. And like I was sharing with you, my background when I left the States was a personal trainer. And I was able to come here, tap into the market here, understand it, and was able to make money here. So there's no excuse whatsoever. Anybody can come down here with their professions, skills, know-how, experiences, and, and knowledge and make an impact here. You know, I, I find that we have been indoctrinated to believe we're, we'll always be workers, working for somebody. And I think that is the, 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 the fear that people have when they're like, what am I gonna do? Well, you have a profession, you have an experience. That's right. You have that, now you gotta put it to work for yourself Definitely. instead of somebody else, Definitely. which is a benefit. Definitely. So if one overcomes their fear, I mean, you see his kingdom right here. I mean, this is a beautiful place that you built from scratch. That's you right. said this was the bush. It was a bush. <laughs> and look at him now. I mean, we're talking what? This was 2007. 2008. So 2008. Roughly going to 15 years. 15 years. And, and, and it took brick upon brick. That's right. To get it. But you got a mortgage? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the answer to that, but I want people to hear. You ain't got no mortgage. I don't even know what a mail looks like. No, no, no. <laughs> Is taxes killing you to an extent, man? Is taking all the money out of you? No. No. Everything can be worked out. Yeah. Everything can be you know, it's out. almost nil to none. 
when you talk about taxes, I, it blows my mind. I think the place I bought, I think it's, if, if, I, if I remember correctly, it might be $200 a year. Again, I mean, that's not even worth discussing. You just, yeah. the important thing is you can come back. Mm -hmm. Again, this is a, is one of the places where I know you can come and start something of your own. Everything that you really felt like you wanted to always do that you couldn't ever do, this is the place to be done because I have done it. You yeah. Know? So there's no excuses. You can come. And to me, the other important aspect of it, we have such a huge young youth capital that can be exploited unless we can come back and empower them mm. because we can transfer our knowledge to our brothers and sisters on the ground who really, they can't really go further than what is available to them yeah. unless we step in. Yeah. So we can give our people here a lot of opportunities that can change the trajectory of their lives. Wow, you know, we were also talking about, you know, in America, um, you chose not to have children in America. <laughs> and I can't blame you, especially how, what's going on now in the community, especially with the, the lost youth. And, you know, it's sad and it breaks my heart every time I see every day these murders and the, these, you know, traumatic experiences of the youth just, you know, being lost. And you chose to wait till you came back to Ghana, what what was what was your reason for that? Well, definitely, it was important for me to know and understand that before I bring you know life into this world to, to set up and build a solid foundation. So as long as that foundation was in there, I was not going to do that. Mm -hmm. It's unfair to them, to my lady. It's just going to be unfair. So I waited to come down ten years, put this place together. And I knew I was ready. Mm -hmm. Found a lady that bought into my vision of how I wanted to live, how I wanted to construct my family, because I had to intentionally undo everything that was do done to me. I, I have to intentionally make sure that it's not done to my kids. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be homeschooled. We're going to eat differently, different lifestyles. So all those things are important. So that's why I chose to wait till I had the foundation. There. So your kids are homeschooled here. They, they're being homeschooled by me. <laughs> when you got the power in your hands, you can do all things. That's right. But when you have the power, you give your power up to other people. They're the ones who control and dictate your life. That's right. Well, brother, Prince, I appreciate you, man, you. for inviting me, man, into your kingdom here and all that you have. You all go check him out. I'll have in the description his information uh, of his location, his, his, his uh, phone numbers and stuff. Do you have Instagram? Uh, you have social media? Instagram, yeah, Palace Africa. Uh, underscore Ghana. Okay. Um, Facebook, the same thing, Palace Africa. Yeah. Underscore Ghana. Okay. So check them out for those who are coming to Ghana. You can have a place right here. You can go ahead and rent short term. And he's definitely going to point you in the right direction of those places. Maybe you need to go ahead and seek out or get yourself settled in if you decide to stay, right? Definitely. 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 All right, family. This is your man, not your boy. This is your man. Not your poor. <laughs> <laughs> Go black to Africa. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it.